Uh, Liam, overall, how do you look back on 2020? Uh, yeah, well, obviously, there's a strange season yet um, with all what, what's happened throughout the year, but I feel like we, we dealt with, with everything in the right way, and you know, on top of that, we, we managed to win the trophy as well, so pretty, pretty pleasing overall. You started the season playing the second row, how did you find that? Yeah, different. Um, I don't really want to play a second row, so um, yeah, that were obviously I, I didn't really enjoy playing there. Um, but luckily, the back end of the year, I managed to play at centre and, and managed to stay there for the rest of the year. And then you had your, your injury layoff and, and lockdown, and obviously the transfer request coming in. That must have been a, a tough period for you. Yeah, it was a very tough period. Um, yeah, I went into lockdown, and um, obviously I had, a, had an injury where I couldn't do anything for a few months. It, you know, it kind of. Um, kept me off, kept me off running for a good few months when it when it shouldn't have took that long. Um, then came back in and obviously there would have been a lot of thought going to going to that and it felt like at the time it was it was the right decision. And the club and yourself were very open about it. Did that help you just to, to move on it and get on with trying to get yourself fit again? It wasn't something that you were um, not trying to talk about. You it was all very much open open up front. Yeah, yeah. Literally, um, you know, as soon as it as soon as it came out. Um, that was kind of it for me. I just kind of wanted to concentrate on getting back fit and, and getting back playing and, and coming in a team. Um, whatever was going on in the background was going on, and you know I could just really focus on on get, try to get back playing. Cameron Howard got an injury first of all, and you got your chance at centre, and obviously then Harry broke his leg, so you got that that run there. Uh, how how much you enjoy playing at centre? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, I said, I've said I like playing centre before, and I think the last time I played, especially left centre, was in 2017. Um, which were a pretty successful year as well, um, you know. So we're really glad to get back there. Um, I thought me and Ash started to, to form quite quite a good partnership as well. Yeah, you mentioned Ash there. Obviously, he's finished as top try scorer. How much do you enjoy that centre wing partnership? Yeah, really enjoyed it with him. Um, obviously, it's probably well known that we're, we're great mates outside of rugby as well. Uh, you know, so it'd been it'd been a great half, uh, second half of the season to to play alongside him as well. And that was pretty much best demonstrated away at wait for the horrible day on the bog of a pitch. But you guys got up with three tries between you and a uh, great partnership down that side. Yeah, that's it. Um, you know, that, that game we just try and, try and dig out a win and, and come out the other side. And you know, luckily, luckily me and Ash, uh, we had a hand in it a couple of tries as well. The big high point obviously was getting back to Wembley and, and winning the Challenge Cup. I mean, been involved in 2014. How did the two compare? Yeah, complete. Contrast to be honest, um, obviously 2014 were stadium full and I was only 19 at the time so I didn't really know how to, how to take it my first final and, and this year uh, obviously empty stadium and, and with all everything what was going on it, it were a strange one but then again you go down in history for, for playing in a final like that so that's uh, yeah it's a, a good sign. At what point did it sort of dawn you how different the day was going to be? I, mean, I remember when you came out for the warm up and it was really everything prior to that was fairly normal you know on the bus in the dressing room but then coming out to an empty stand, it was that the point where you yeah, sort of thought? Yeah, that probably, yeah. I think when you get to the stadium on game day and you walk in, not last time there was, you know, not, not a full stadium yet because everyone were, were getting in, but you know, it was full and the, the atmosphere was starting to build up. This time you just walked in and it was like the day before where you go and look at the stadium the day before and it's just empty and you imagine it being full of fans, so that were, that were probably the strangest moment. And the game itself really dominated first half, but then we're holding on in the second half. What was, what, would you remember those closing moments? Um, I just remember when uh, I can't remember who scored where um, they put a bomb up and the score off back of that. I remember still behind sticks thinking, "No, we're not, we're not losing this now. We, we can't lose it." Um, you know, luckily we managed to, to come back into it, and then and then Gailey steps up with, with the one pointer to win, is it? And he, he probably talked about that for for however many years. But if he gets to a final and, and he managed to pull it off, and the celebrations after was pretty unique in, in the dressing room. Yeah, they, they were class. They were the best times. Um, you know, no one wanted to leave change rooms for ages. Everyone was just still sat in the kit. Um, music were, were blaring, a couple of beers getting drunk and uh, just enjoying everyone's company and, and celebrating the win. And looking ahead to the future, what, what do you see in store for yourself? Um, I'm not too sure yet, it's still yet to be decided. Um, obviously I'll speak to a few people in the background and, and we'll go from there.